Hello. Today we get to finish Amos. We'll read uh, chapters 5 through 9. Hear this word, O house of Israel, this lament I take up concerning you. Fallen is virgin Israel, never to rise again, deserted in her own land with no one to lift her up. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The city that marches out a thousand strong for Israel will have only a hundred left. The town that marches out a hundred strong will have only ten left. This is what the Sovereign Lord... <laughs> I just made that up right there. Verse 4. This is what the Lord says to the house of Israel. Seek me and live. Do not seek Bethel. Do not go to Gilgal. Do not journey to Beersheba, for Gilgal will surely go into exile, and Bethel will be reduced to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, or he will sweep through the house of Joseph like a fire. It will devour, and Bethel will have no one to quench it. You who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground, he who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns blackness into dawn and darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the Lord of the land. The Lord is his name. He flashes destruction on the stronghold and brings the fortified city to ruin. You hate the one who reproves in court and despite and despise him who tells the truth. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent man keeps quiet in such times, for the times are evil. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good. Maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord God Almighty says. There will be wailing in all the streets and cries of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be summoned to weep and the mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious feasts. I cannot stand your assemblies. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the desert, O house of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of your king, the pedestal of your idols, the star of your God which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. Chapter six. Woe to you who are complacent in Zion and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria, you notable men of the foremost nation to whom the people of Israel come. Go to Kalne and look at it. Go from there to greet, to great Hamath, and then go down to Gath in Philistia. Are they better off than your two kingdoms? Is their land larger than yours? You put off the evil day and bring near a reign of terror. You lie on beds inlaid with ivory and lounge on your couches. You dine on choice lambs and fattened calves. You strum away on your harps like David and in improvise on musical instruments you drink wine by the bowlful and use the finest lotions but you do not grieve over the ruin of joseph 
Therefore, you will be among the first to go into exile. Your feasting and lounging will end. The Sovereign Lord has sworn by himself, the Lord God Almighty declares, I abhor the pride of Jacob and detest his fortresses. I will deliver up the city and everything in it. If ten men are left in one house, they too will die. And if a relative who is to burn the bodies comes to carry them out of the house and asks anyone still hiding there, is anyone with you? And he says, no. Then he will say, hush, we must not mention the name of the Lord. For the Lord has given the command and he will smash the great house into pieces and the small house into bits. Do horses run on the rocky crags? Does one plow there with oxen? Do you have turn, oh, but you have turned justice into poison and the fruit of righteousness into bitterness. You who rejoice in the conquest of Lodabar and say, did we not take Karnaim by our own strength? For the Lord God Almighty declares, I will stir up a nation against you, O house of Israel. They will oppress you all the way from Lebo Hamath to the valley of Arabah. Chapter 7. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. He was preparing swarms of locusts after the king's share had been harvested and just as the second crop was coming up. They had stopped the land clean, stripped the land clean. I cried out, Sovereign Lord, forgive. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. Wow. This will not happen, the Lord said. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me. The Sovereign Lord was calling for judgment by fire. It dried up the great deep and devoured the land. Then I cried out, Sovereign Lord, I beg you stop. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. So the Lord relented. This will not happen either, the Sovereign Lord said. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand and the lord asked me what do you see amos a plumb line i replied then the lord said look i am setting a plumb line among my people israel i will spare them no longer the high places of israel will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of israel will be ruined with my sword i will rise against the house of jeroboam then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos is rising a cons raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all the his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy any more at Bethel because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a shepherd and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Now then, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel and stop preaching against the house of Israel. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in the city and your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be measured and divided up and you yourself will die in a pagan country. And Israel will certainly go into exile away from their native land. Mm. Chapter 8. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me, a basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? He asked. A basket of ripe fruit, I answered. Then the Lord said to me, The time is ripe for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. In that day, declares the Sovereign Lord, the songs of the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. Hear this, you who trample the needy, and do away with the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain and the Sabbath be ended that we may market wheat, skimp, skimping the measure, boasting the price? 
and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, selling even the sweepings with the, with the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this and all who live in it mourn? The whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred up and then sink like the river of Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious feasts into mourning and all your singing into weeping. I will make all of you wear sackcloth and shave your heads. I will make the time like mourning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Wow, that's sad. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. In that day, the lovely young women and strong young men will faint because of thirst. They who swear by the shame of Samaria or say, as surely as your God lives, O Dan, or as surely as the God of Beersheba lives, they will fall, never to rise again. Chapter 9. I saw the Lord standing by the altar, and he said, Strike the tops of the pillars so that the threshold shake. Bring them down on the heads of all the people. Those who are left I will kill with the sword. Not one will get away. None will escape. Though they dig down to the depths of the grave, from there my hand will take them. Though they climb up to the heavens, from there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, Car Carmel, there I will hunt them down and seize them. Though they hide from me at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent to bite them. Though they are driven into exile by their enemies, there I will command the sword to slay them. I will fix my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, he who touches the earth and it melts, and all who live in it mourn. The whole land rises like the Nile, then sinks like the river of Egypt. He who builds his lofty palace in the heavens and sets its foundation on the earth, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land, the Lord is his name. Are not you Israelites the same to me as the Cushites, declares the Lord? Did I not bring Israel up from Egypt and the Philistines from Kaptor and the Arameans from Kerr? Surely the eyes of the sovereign Lord are on the sinful kingdom. I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not totally destroy the house of Jacob, declares the Lord. For I will give the command and I will shake the house of Israel among the nations as grain is shaken in a sieve and not a pebble will reach the ground. All the sinners among my people will die by the sword. All those who say disaster will not overtake or meet us. Oh, oh, that's the end of the sentence. I'm sorry. All the sinners among my people will die by the sword. All those who say disaster will not overtake or meet us. Verse 11. In that day, I will restore David's fallen tent. I will repair its broken places, restore its ruins, and build it as you, as it used to be, so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord, who will do these things. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. I will bring back my exiled people Israel they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. That's a good way to end. It's kind of ending with timelessness.
Well, verse 13 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, which is now, which is what we're living in now, when the reaper of the will be overtaken by the plowman, which means we're constantly sowing and reaping at the same time. That's the, that's the time we're living in now because of the blood of Jesus, because of what Jesus, the price Jesus paid for us. We get to be sowing and reaping at all times. And the planter by the one for treading grapes, new wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> it's a good way to end. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we get to start the book of Obadiah. I love you.